we're all here. Hello and welcome to the first premiere episode of Five Wise Guys, where old guys talk about the art of living in the third act. I want to introduce you to our wise guys. To my far left here is Danny Klein, author, playwright, gag writer. In fact, he's written gags over the years for Flip Wilson and Lily Tomlin, and he said his best gig, if I remember correctly, was that you got locked in a room for a show to write Let's Play Post Office with four guys from Mad Magazine. <laughs> that, was it. that was when my education began. And, and, and how long did it last? It lasted one cycle, 13 weeks. Merv Griffin was the producer. I had never met guys like this in my life. In high school, they were writing gags for Borscht Belt comedians. No kidding. Hmm. In high school. And, uh, and making money. So these guys taught me, amongst other things, how to make a living writing. Two of them wrote funny fortune cookies. Uh. 25 cents a, a hit. They got 25 cents each? That's a lot of money. <laughs> And one of them wrote Bazooka Bubblegum. Oh, fortune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love those. A dollar. Oh, Ooh. you got out of the Chinese racket quick. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Danny. <laughs> to my left, Bob Lobauer, actor, raconteur, uh, actually has played various roles in his life. Polonius. Uh, give us another one or two there. Uh, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go straight to my favorite, that's yes. Mengelberg. Mengelberg and, and Mahler, which is an award-winning play by Danny Klein. In fact, I believe Bob's performance is definitely considered a, a tour de force. Uh, here, here. Brilliant, brilliant production. Here. He, was, he was up for the best solo actor in Massachusetts that year. There you go. Okay, to my right. Is another schmoozer over here. <laughs> Matt oh, Jack I didn't know what to do. Schmoozer in chief, Matt Janabelle. He, he has run uh, an independent bookstore in Lenox for 40 years. In fact, he, he just received, he got the first mention in a new book called Footnotes from the Greatest mm. Bookstores in the World. That's and, right. And uh, it is. He's, I'll drink to that. I'll okay. drink to let's that. Drink. So well, I, but not okay. water. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, let's do that. Thank we you, should, gentlemen. This is a ceremonial first first round. We should do it. Jeffrey. Salud. Salud, yes, gents. Okay, Salud. we'll do that. Salud. Yasu. Yasu. All right. Yasu. Yasu. As I say, Matthew's a storyteller, and uh, to prove it, he's got a little black book of punchlines in his back pocket. To prod do, do his carry, aging carry, memory. Do we have to make up the joke? No, I, I, yeah, we'll to, to remember to the joke. <laughs> he prods himself by the punchline by which he remembers the joke. Uh, by the way, he wrote a very good book about his experiences. Yes, exactly, and he's going to talk to us about that. Yes, And I am. to his right, and my extreme right, although he is oh, by me. no means an extreme rightist, is <laughs> Jeff Kent. An actor for many years who has played Scrooge in a stage adaptation of Christmas Carol, John Proctor. Humbug. In <laughs> John Proctor in um, The Crucible. Right, right. And uh, also uh, played um, George Bernard Shaw in Dear Liar. Yes. There you go. That was right. Now, great, great comedic actor. Very comedic actor. Great With comedic face, actor. He can make uh, anything. Uh, come make on, anything. Boys. Exactly. He'll make a couple of faces. All right. <laughs> make a face. And uh, when you're on the stage with him, he ramps you up. You know, he comes out on this. I was doing this one line. Jeff comes out, and my whole my whole scene got bigger. The yeah. cattle prod. They helps. say good actors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Jeff, by the way, like the rest of us, has cobbled together uh, a livelihood to keep the creative fires burning, yes. and uh, he, which at, uh, he describes at the best of times, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll maybe talk about that a little bit further. I 
Yeah, who are you? And Sam oh, yeah, Pittman. Who, you? who let this guy in? Yeah, I'm the co-founder of the Third Act Project, which is... And it's is, his birthday today. And, and it's my birthday, birthday. my 74th birthday, to you, birthday today. And I'm the co-founder of the Third Act Project, which is an online community for men who are living the art of old age and talking about it and uh, we are dedicated to the proposition that no matter how we may physically diminish over the years or vice versa that right our, in front of you <laughs> <laughs> that our oh he's oh for god's sake so you say I'm something diminishing. serious <laughs> he's the, he's the fourth time he says diminishes when you do that you, you're, yeah. you're always the, jumping the queue it's the fourth cup of diminishing <laughs> yeah <laughs> So anyway, we're dedicated. You want to see the fourth stage of life? <laughs> <laughs> see how he doesn't let you talk? I'm sorry. I'll <laughs> this is a up. television show, for God's sake. I'm sorry. I've got to be able to talk. I'm so sorry. So anyway, the Third Act Project, so everybody knows, is dedicated to the proposition that you can be falling apart physically, but that spiritual, creative, intellectual growth is boundless. What we say is don't die till you're dead. <laughs> now. That's not bad, is it? <laughs> That's good. I That's like good. that. Okay. I like that. I never heard that before. Yeah. So or what I, I was thinking was, speaking of life in the third act, that we might start today, since I've been introducing you by way of the, our labors over the years, to talk about the, what, where work lives in our lives today. And I thought, Danny, I, you mentioned at our dinner not long ago that uh, Somebody had approached you recently about a film version of, of one of your books. Is that correct? Uh, and I wonder where that lives now. Uh, I'm still waiting to hear. It was a TV version. I have no idea what he has in mind. It's a book I co-wrote, uh, my biggest bestseller, played on a platypus walk into a bar. It's explaining philosophy through jokes. It has no characters. It has no plot line. Some actor who I hadn't heard of, but the young people told me is well known, Matthew Modine. Mm -hmm. Sure. He optioned it to oh, uh, make wonderful. it into a TV show. That's the last I heard from him. But his uh, his check uh, uh, cleared. The check cleared. cleared. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Well, that's uh, exciting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or it could I've, be. I've, you know, you're not letting of, yourself get excited you know. yet. So it would be your work, but they would they would you don't know. We don't have a fucking. <laughs> what he wants to do with okay. it. You know, we had a, a writer come at, at the library years ago because a book of hers was made into a film. And somebody asked her after she, her presentation, how does it feel to have your book made into a film? Uh, uh, and she said, your baby. Your oh. baby. How, uh. It's taken out of your hands. And somebody else wrote the oh, screenplay. Yeah. She said, well, first of all, I sold my baby. <laughs> so and then you 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 have to start there. So you sell the rights to your to your book as a TV show. You have those you have those jokes. Who knows what they're going to do? They better not tell those jokes badly. Bob Lobauer, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> who, who's been acting. I, I want to talk to you about. I know that your current uh, title is as. Uh, Master of Weapons. Weapons Master. Weapons yeah, Master. Yeah, yeah. So what, what's that about? <laughs> yeah, I always like to think I'm an actor, and this was my other job dealing with the weapons. But uh, every year we have uh, two, one of these uh, various times. It opens at different times in the season, but one of the backstage things is a tour right. of the facility, and, and it's a really popular spot. When they, I try to make it a point to be there, even if I'm not if I'm acting or if I'm free, uh, even if I'm not cast, which has been unfortunately the case for the last three years. <laughs> Are you listening? Uh, so let me ask you, Matt. Uh-oh. Let me ask you, 40 years in a bookstore, raised a family, two girls by yourself. <clears throat> what's next? What, what's this, what does it fill for you now and what comes next? I still love it. I still love it. I'm, I'm, I'm still, this year it's different. This year, after 40 years, and I got a lot of attention last year for my 40th year, and then, and then uh, the world happened this year, too, mm. and people are coming in that I, right now, this spring of whatever year this is, is that people <laughs> are coming in, and, and um, the bookstore is like a sanctuary. 
is I still enjoy uh, um, if you're there when you when when you're there you see if you know I'll tell you about a book if you're a pretty girl I'll read you from the same book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh -oh. You know Jeff, <laughs> great <laughs> actor. You know we've been in a workshop together for a few years <laughs> now. I have a blast with you. We love I love to watch you perform. Thanks. And you've had a retail business for yeah. years and and and. Tell me about how that has worked and where it is now. Well, you know, as a, as a young man in love with acting and with theater, I felt sure that I needed to have a fallback position. Didn't want to wait tables because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Have clumsy. you ever waited tables? Very briefly until I dropped yeah. a drink on somebody. Have you? <laughs> That's how that started, by the way, with Gracie. No, I'm only kidding. Uh, but um, I went to work... Uh, uh, for a guy that uh, that was rather a madman, politically, philosophically, I mean, he was all over the place, and I was just blown away by his uh, uh, his what well, I perceived to be his wisdom and, and his knowledge of esoteric subjects. You were a young guy. I was a young guy, just starting out acting in in, in high school and community plays and stuff. So I he taught he said. Uh, well, let's see what you're like. He taught me to fix vacuum cleaners and sewing machines. So I did it about a month, and he said, you know what? Here's what I'd like you to do. You're really terrible at fixing vacuum cleaners. <laughs> so I just Wait a minute. Don't you fix mine? You know, that's why it didn't work. <laughs> he said, all I want you to do is to watch me for a while. Watch what I do when I get a, a, a machine in for repair. And what I'd like you to do is to stand out front, you seem to be very good with people, and get the price for the repair. I have a lot of problem, he says, getting the price. I always feel I'm charging too much, or I may not be char charging too little. He said, this is what I want, but I'm never able to do it. I want you to do that for me. So I did, <laughs> and, I, and I would add like $10 to the price. <laughs> he loved me. I had no problem getting the price for the repair. I sold what we were doing. I had a whole, uh, you know, litany of, of things that were going to happen to your vacuum or sewing machine. <laughs> your <better>. whole life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that temporary job became my profession for the last 40 hmm. years, became my profession. And, and you raised a family. I raised a, a beautiful family. I've spent a, a lifetime, 40 years, uh, Mostly uh, cobbling together. Cobbling together. Mostly, mostly. Get a chance to talk. I get a chance to talk every once in a while. I want to feel like I'm participating. Uh, well, that wasn't in the contract. Just not the schmuck who that. facilitates. <laughs> so, who's in charge when you while you're talking? You can ask me anything. <laughs> That's the thing. You you can I want ask Jeff anything. To be in charge We're at, talking, yeah, right? yeah, I want to be in charge. Has he right? talked enough yet? I think so. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> All right, Bob, let's Can't talk more about you now. <laughs> no, go ahead. You cobbled. I've cobbled the way, the way everybody else has. I'm a writer by training, and, and I did freelance and, and a million I've, different I've sold fields. your books. He, he sold a couple of my gardening books. Gardening Had books? Had to put them on consignment, of course, to him. But then, you know, it's like <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't even pay me the 50%. Give yeah, him the money. Well, yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess, how many years has it been now? <laughs> Two dollars more. Two dollars more, more. <laughs> yeah. So... And then, and then um, the freelance market just crashed in 2008. I, I couldn't throw myself in the ocean. And yeah. I had been gardening <clears throat> sort of by myself or, um, you know, independently for years and writing about it. And at the age of 66, I got a gig designing landscape and gardens. Oh, well, cool. And I grew out of it, so to speak. It, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And... I feel great. I'm feeling like, you know, I slow down a little, like that energy is not what it once was, but I feel like as I'm facing this coming season, you know, which is upon us, that I'm hoping that I still have the strength and the wherewithal. Now, one of the things that gives me a little extra juice is I got his daughter working for me, do, do she did last year. I have her do all the muscle work. The heavy lifting. It's terrific. Not she, after no. she sees this show. <laughs> you know, looking forward now, mm. you know, it's like, and, 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 and having arrived at this stage of life, I don't know um, how it is with, with all of you, but 
not having beca- by by virtue of cobbling together, I haven't put a lot of money together. <laughs> I, I have put I know that one barely you know anything and. It we all have our financial level. records here. We're going to put yeah. it down. And, and, uh, it creates a level of Mine's insecurity. Being audited, I'm sorry, I can't share it with you. <laughs> and I feel like, <laughs> you know, if I run out of energy, if I, if I run down physically, and I can't make what you I make. You can always come and live with us. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you, I'm wondering you, what, you, you know, you where that world of, of physicality lives with you and mm-hmm. as uh, in, at your ages now and what's going on with that and how oh. it makes you feel and if you want to talk about that. Join us next time when the wise guys talk about health, friendship, and even the specter of mortality in the third act.